Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome to a quick video. Yes, this is going to be very small little editing going on. It's been a while since I've made a video, especially an SSTO video. Been going through a lot this month, so I've been streaming a lot. But let's just jump right into it, shall we? So in a nutshell, I was inspired by Star Trek, and I made a ship like this one. Now, notice I just I said inspired by Star Trek. I wasn't trying to copy, copy, copy it, but I like Gene's idea of warp nacelles having to see each other and all that jazz. I'm the original Star Trek, right? Some of the New Age stuff is okay, but anyway, don't get me on that rant. Anyway, but for every single vessel of Star Trek, there's always a shuttle, right? Well, almost always. Anyway, but because this vessel was so small, I had to figure out how to build a small little SSTO. The final product became this thing, but when it was going through its phases, it started off as this guy. Whopping in at a 13, almost 14 tons. It was too big and definitely wasn't going to make the cut, but it is an SSTO and can make orbit. Inside the cargo bay is the control command, some extra fuel and um, uh, RCS and stuff like that, batteries, reentry probe core and the works. But I needed to go even smaller. So the next design version was this one. Actually, no, wait, do I have it? Okay, here we are. So this is the second uh, version of that. This was supposed to be a real, it's supposed to be real tight, right? The wing on the inside has a fuck is this rotation servo f12 and so it rotates in order to be more streamlined when docking in space and then just when it goes into the atmosphere and lands this of course rotates outwards allowing the craft to land like an aircraft however it still was too big this was actually for another uh federation looking spacecraft but regardless it was still too big so that's when i went to the next prototype which was this little guy and you think oh that's so cute nine tons now you know just look at him he's just so cute only one wing one wing wing connector type b that's it one that's it notice there's no landing gear either the first prototype for a small little itty bitty shuttlecraft was actually going to be a lot like a dinghy it was going to land in water and take off from the water i was going to sacrifice landing on land capabilities because of the fact that i thought at the time that landing on land was just going to be virtually impossible the smaller and tinier you got this is due to the fact that sometimes these landing gears can be a little bit crackeny even for the thoroughly ironed out ksp1 game in comparison to ksp2 which i had to delete because it was burning up my gpu but anyway this shuttle came with the feature of being able to fold up the wings so that it could fit inside the docking bay of the spacecraft but as you can see there's a little bit of clipping going on right there and on top of that when in flight even if you locked these things the rotation servos are very wobbly even with auto strut and rigid attachment on they tend to ebb and flow and bend pretty good during flight. Amazingly enough too, this thing, unfortunately, wasn't small enough. When trying to fit into the back of the starship, the fuel tanks on the sides would push into the actual hull of the craft, so that wasn't going to work. So I had to go even smaller and even lighter. And here we are with the damn near final version. I say damn near because it could probably be better. Final version of the shuttlecraft. Notice I do have landing gears on this, but that does not mean it can land on land. Even though I've never tested it before, it was never designed to land on land. It still lands in the water, just like its predecessor. But the difference is, is that there's no moving parts other than the Elevon. It's got a parachute to help it with landing. To help stabilize the craft, there are structural wing type D on the side and the wing connector type E on the top and the bottom but they're also tilted as you can see they've got a bit of a incline to them that's to help with lift because this thing almost virtually has none in order to save on weight and drag in order to make this thing work I really had to cut down on the wings now you can make a wingless SSTO there's plenty out there I've made lots of them but to get a little bit of lift in order to help with fuel consumption I put these bits of wings on here now of course it has everything else it's got the dedicated green and red lights blinking it's got forward lights it has all the directional rcs it has rcs fuel not only in the capsule but hidden just behind the crew cabin is a service bay inside the service bay is some batteries an rtg and of course some tiny little monopropellant tanks in the back of the rapier is a small little nose cone to help with drag normally for larger craft i use an aerodynamic nose cone it cuts draggy dra draggy what the fuck it cuts drag even further down however because this thing spends so little time in the atmosphere because it's so small and so fast i was more worried about weight than i am drag and of course the aerodynamic didn't 
de 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 demonic. <laughs> demonic. The aerodynamic nose cone, dynamic nose cone, I keep on wanting to say demonic nose cone, weighs almost as much as three of these small nose cones. So when you're in space, weight becomes the major issue and not drag. Of course, duh. And yes, I've tested it with this one and I get less delta V when I get into orbit. So, plus it just looks cooler. It's nice. It's got the nice cool factor going on. Why does this thing have wheels, you say? Is because of the fact that once it lands near shore, like a, you know, almost like a little dinghy craft, it's a it's, it's small little water vessel, lands on the water, it then can use its air breathing mode in order to get on shore and maybe even a little further inland in order to drop off crew and supplies or pick up an away team. We did all this in one of my streams. Go ahead and check it out if you have, a, have the time. About an hour and a half. It's pretty cool. But we'll go ahead and fly this thing real quick just to show you the different types of ways it can get into orbit. Yes, this thing can take off from land. I found that out in the stream. But it needs a hill or something in order to kind of prop itself up. It has enough TWR to be able to carry itself it w if it was able to get nose up. Like I said, you need a little hill or something to bounce off of. So we'll do it that way, and then we'll do it another way, which is the underwater way. It was specifically designed to land and take off from the water. So we'll do it from the land version first, and then we'll do it from the water version. Kind of an all-terrain SSTO, if that's even possible. From this point on, OBS did not record a lot of the game noise, therefore I'm going to have to substitute it with my own... Thank you very much. Okay, so in case you were wondering how the hell they get on this thing, you can either bring down the legs, but that would kind of make the thing jiggle. I've tried it before. Uh, if you want to get up on this thing, these guys are really great climbers. There we go. Just keep on hitting the F. Come around here. There we go. And one more. And cool. So that's how they get up there, no problems, okay? Now notice that I've uh, had this thing next to a water. That's, that's usually where it would land and come ashore. But if you wanted to take off from the land, you need to find some sort of hill, something to bop this thing up in the air. So let's give it a shot, shall we? All right, let's get the nav ball on 90. And here we go. SAS on. Up, up, up! Ah! Maybe I should have started from that hill. Full power, let's go. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Up, up, up! Up, 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 up. Oh, oh, more power! Ah! All right, let's try it on this side. How about this side? This this side looks promising. No, 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 no! Hey, Kia! What the? You know, turn my RCS on, even though it's probably not going to do a damn thing. Easy, 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 and lift off, lift off. Lift off! <laughs> All right, now we turn, turn, baby, turn, turn, turn. That's right, turn. Okay, ninety, turn for ninety. Shit. Ah, oh, there's a hill. Okay, so we go to about ten degrees. Eh, there we go, ten degrees. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay. All right, so we got into orbit with over 425 meters per second delta V left over, which is plenty for maneuvering and docking. Now, before you ask, no, I do not use restock. The reason is because I learned the hard way that restock actually changes some of the drag boxes of some of the parts. So if you built a craft in restock, a craft that's like an SSTO, more than likely, if you built the same SSTO without restock, you would find that you had either, either less drag or more drag compared to the restock version of your SSTO. Yes, I found that out the hard way. I love restock. It looks amazing, but they went ahead and they changed some of the physics of the parts, which kind of ruined it for me when it comes to being pure stock. So yeah, I had to stop using it. Okay, so now what it's actually designed to do is that when it lands on water, comes on shore, picks up the people or drops off whatever, now it has to take off from the water. So gently go into the water. Very nice. Gears up. Now, interestingly enough, Scatterer has this cool wave effect, which makes it a little harder to, to do boat stuff and whatever because your ship is constantly bouncing up and down but it's just it's so beautiful look at that that's just <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway 
Let's go ahead and start our approach. Basically, you just want to get out there a little bit, away from land, because she's going to take a nosedive into the water. I know what the comments are saying now. Why not just put propellers and stuff and so you can do whatever? That has been an idea, yes. But like I said, I'm trying to keep the weight down, because the more weight you put on this thing, the less delta V you have once you get out there. So right now, rapier engines can work underwater and in the air. I know that's not completely realistic, unless you go like to close cycle, but all right, we should be far out now. Let's try this. That should be fine. I mean, it's far enough away. I don't think we'll run into it. All right, let's give it a shot in three, two, one, full power. Here we go. I get a little speed going on top and then you can dive a little further down. I wasted some fuel here, but that's okay. All right, 10, 10, a little, a little above 10. Here we go, here we go. Okay, cool. Alright, so there you go. There you have it. A teeny tiny little three personnel carrier SSTO with whatever what, blah, 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 whatever baggage they have in their inventory. Like I said, if you want to see it in action, leaving the ship and landing and all that good stuff, you can check out the live stream. But anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you're interested, we have a membership program. Pretty cool. Check it out because it's got a little emojis and stuff and badges and whatnot. But anyway, I gotta run. Thank you so much again and and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.